just when I thought things couldn't get any better, Alibaba does it again. Quen Image Edit just came out, and boy, it is amazing. And I don't use the word amazing lightly when I'm reviewing something, but this really is. I've downloaded both the FP8 version and the Q4 GGUF version. Now, I've included links to both the GGUF model and the FP8 model in my Patreon, don't worry, it's free. The FP8 version goes into the model's diffusion models folder. The GGUF version goes into the model's UNET folder. As for text encoders, you'll want to download both the GGUF and the safe tensors version and place them in the model's text encoders folder. And don't forget the VAEs, those need to go into the model's VAE folder. I've also included links to the two Quen Image Lightning LoRa models. Once you've finished placing everything in the right folders, update Comfy UI. That update step is critical. It's the only way you'll get the Quen Image Editor text encoder node. After that, restart Comfy UI and drag the workflow into Comfy UI. That's it. Just make sure every model is mapped to the correct folder and you're good to go. So let's start with the first problem I ran into this weekend. I was working with WAN 2.2 and I wanted to change this image, an ogre standing, into an ogre sitting on a wooden chair with a wooden crown tilted to the right. Context kept giving me the same result, but it didn't capture the photorealism of the original image. So now, let's see what Quen Image Edit can do. Before we get into the results, let me explain the workflow. It's made of five groups. The first group is the Image Upload to Edit group. The second group is where you load the models. The third group is the Quen Text Encode node, and this is the new node that makes all of this possible. The rest of the workflow is your standard K sampler, VAE, and Save Image node. I've added the Sage Attention nodes into the final workflow, but if you don't have Sage Attention installed, just make sure to turn them off. For this test, I'm using the four step LoRa. My prompt is simple. Change the ogre to sit on an old crumply wooden chair with an old wooden crown that's slanted to the right. The steps are set to 4, CFG is 1, and here's what we get. The ogre is still the same, but it added exactly what I asked for. The only issue is the crown. I clearly said, the crown should be slanted to the right. Maybe I wasn't quite clear enough. So I adjust the prompt, with an old wooden crown on his head, the wooden crown is slanted to the right. Now, it's still not exactly a wooden crown, but it's close enough for what I need. This time, I've included Sage Attention, but I'm going to bypass it. One thing I've noticed, if you ever end up with black images, try bypassing Sage Attention. That sometimes fixes it. Next, I'm going to do the same test with the Q4 GGUF version and see how much image quality drops. The Quen 2.5 VL GGUF model threw an error for me. The best fix here is just to switch back to the FP8 scaled version in Comfy UI, and that works fine. And it looks good. So basically, the GGUF text encoder doesn't work in this setup, but at least the VAE and the Quen image edit model itself run correctly. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is the FP8 version, the Q4 version, and the full base 40 gig model side by side. Next, let's rotate this character 90 degrees and make the image photorealistic. I want to see how the model handles different perspectives and also whether it can follow two instructions at the same time or if I need to break it down into increments. So when I asked it to do both at once, it changed the image into something that looked more 3D instead of just photorealistic. So I'm going to do this in iterations. First, I'll change the load image node to the load image from output node. Now I'll run the prompt, change the image to a photorealistic image. The output is amazing. It handled that first request seamlessly. I'm sold. Now let's look at the second request. I'll refresh the node to pull in the updated image and then I'll change the prompt to change the image into a side profile of the boy. And it did exactly that. Iterations work just fine here. What you're seeing on the screen now are the three versions, FP8, GGUF, and BF16. All right, let's push it further with a style transfer. I'm taking this image and transforming it into a Studio Ghibli piece. And yeah, I know, this is probably the first thing everybody does when they try out a new model. But the results, even on just four steps, impressive. 
Now one last test. How good is it with text? I want to see if it can change the text into the sneaky robot shop. Let's see what happens. Not good, not good at all. So let me try again. This time I'll switch to the eight step Laura and set the steps to eight. Still not happening. Looks like text rendering needs a lot more. I'll bypass the Laura's entirely and just run it with 20 steps. And here's something interesting. It actually feels faster without the Laura's, but still nothing. Let's push it all the way to 50 steps. And finally, we're really close. So here are the three versions again, FP8, GGUF, and BF16. This model does more than advertised. The only thing I need it to handle now is two images at once. I'll probably try chaining the input nodes later and see what I get. But for now, I'm happy. So is it better than Flux Context? I think it is, at least in some things. What we really need now is a solid prompting guide, or maybe I'll just make one myself in the future. I love this competition. But there's one thing that always bothered me about Flux Context, and that's reposing. What I want is to use this like a control net, basically feed it a reference image, feed it a pose, and then ask it to repose the image. Flux Context doesn't want to do that. ChatGPT tries, but it falls short. I seriously hope this model can handle it. Thanks for sticking around, and please like and subscribe to Sneaky Robot for more comfy UI instructional videos. Until next time, bye.